Mark 4:35 and on. And it says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There was also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, re rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Aren't you glad you have a God that the winds and the waves obey his voice? Aren't you glad that you have someone on your side that in the midst of the storm, in the midst of certain situations that he's not scared of the storm, that he's able to say something and at that name Jesus, the storm has to be quiet. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to have Jesus on my side. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to have someone of such a great magnitude, a God that the winds and the waves obey him. I'm glad to have him on my side. And I'm going to be kind of focusing on Peter here in, in, the, in the story. I'm going to be sharing two stories. I'm going to share the story, other one a little later. But I'm going to focus on Peter here. Uh, Peter is, is a man that throughout the Bible, he's, he's a very outspoken man. He's a, he's a man that says a lot and does little. He says a lot. And you know what I mean? Like when someone was trying to mess with Jesus, Peter straight up took out a machete just pop got the ear off just like that know, whoa Peter calm down know what I mean like you know, it's all good know what I mean Jesus just whoop, put the ear back on and and Peter throughout the Bible when he was with Jesus he was a very outspoken man he was he perceived to have so much faith he perceived to have so that he could do so much when Jesus said who's gonna betray me he said I, no, I Jesus I won't betray I won't betray no I'll never do that no I won't do that and and, and in the midst of the storm he begins to cry out along with the disciples and Peter and Peter and the disciples are are beginning to panic and the the title of my message I want you to tap your neighbor on your right or the one that you like you like a little better and tell them sleep in the storm amen and we see in the story Jesus is sleeping in the storm my first thought I want to share to you is rest in the fact God has an other side for you Rest in the fact in the Bible, and it says here in the story, leaving the crowd behind, they took, no, it says that day, that day when evening came, he said to his, to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. I want to let you know that that statement is God's promise. You will get to the other side. That statement is not just mere words. That statement is God saying, let us go to the other side. He's saying there is another side for you. God is saying there is another side for your family. It may seem like when you're going through the storm that things are going rocky, but there is another side for your finances. There is another side for your family, for your education. There is an answer to your problem. There is a bright future, a light at the end of, at the, end of the tunnel. But the thing is, just like the disciples, they were given a promise. They were given, hey, we're going to get to the other side. Because what God says, he will complete. The Bible says, he, that who, he who starts a good work in me, he will see it to completion. So what he says, he will do. His word never comes back void. The Bible says heaven and hell, er, er, heaven, uh, heaven and earth may pass, but your word still stands. God's word for your life, God's word for your family, for, for things that are going on is you will get to the other side. But the thing is when you're going through the storm and the thing is when you're going through the, your situation, when you're going through your life's uh, situations and issues and problems in your family and you see God has given you a dry ground promise but you begin to have disbelief the moment you get wet. God has given you a dry ground promise. The moment you get wet, you begin to doubt. 
you begin to doubt what God said for you you begin to doubt the very thing that God did for you the very thing that God says and I want us to begin to in our minds to begin to build memorials of what God I want us to be begin to build memorials of miracles of what God has done for you in your life because when you are going through the storm it's very easy to doubt God when you're going through the storm it's very easy in the midst God has promised you something but the moment you start hitting the turbulence the moment you start hitting the, the, the thunder and the lightning and the storms begin to rage and you're looking at your situation you begin to doubt God so what I saw what I want to encourage you to do is when you're going through your storm to not look at what you see but to close your eyes and remember what God said because when you begin to look at your situation when you're going through the storm and you're steering the ship you're steering your life you're steering your family you're steering your finances and the thunder starts raging and the lightning starts flashing and the ship begins to rock it's very easy to begin to begin to doubt what God said it's very easy to begin to doubt what God said and so in that moment in the moment of storm in the moment of, of tribulation I want you to begin to close your eyes to begin to still steer the ship and in the midst of when it seems like God is not there God is sleeping in the midst of the the storm when you say God where are you you begin to remember the miracles that God's done because right now you can't grab onto anything the storm is raging the thunder is is, is roaring the lightning is flashing and it seems like no hope so what you do is you close your eyes and you begin to grab what God has done for you you begin to remember the time your brother God has saved your brother God came for you came in for you in your finances you begin to remember what God has done close your eyes remember what God said don't look at what you see because what you see can begin to deceive you. What you see, your perspective of what your life is right now seems like God is absent. I want to let you know, don't let God's absence, God's silence dictate God's absence. Don't let God's silence begin to say, God, where are you? And what I, if you read on, he says, he got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Because when they were on dry grounds, God did so many things. God, Jesus was, was doing miracles along with the disciples. There was a lot of things happening. And he's saying, do you still not have faith did you still not see what I've done or do you limit God to only the small miracles do you only limit God say God I believe you and the very the thing is we have a tendency to believe for other be, other people's miracles more than we believe for ours we be we, be, we have a tendency to believe that God could do it for them but for my sickness I don't think so and God is saying Jesus is saying do you still not believe or do you begin to limit God to saying God I only believe that you could do this certain type of miracle but God is saying that I'm the God in the winds and the waves obey my name that I don't don't limit me to only the, the the small miracles don't limit me to only the back pain believe that cancers will begin to be healed believe that stadiums will begin to be filled begin to believe that my son and my daughter will begin to come back to the Lord when you look at what you see your faith will fail and you're gonna begin to question God See, when you begin to look at your storm, you don't see an end. You don't see calm seas ahead. You don't see sunlight ahead. You don't see other, other people that are doing good ahead. All you see is darkness. The Bible says they were going in the evening. All you could see is darkness. All you could see is a storm, is raging seas, is thunder and lightning. All you could see is chaos in your life. And when you begin to look in that, it's a no doubter that your faith is going to begin to fail. When all you see is disaster around you, 
you have to begin to in that moment remember what God's done or you're gonna begin to question God you're gonna say God where are you God how dare you be sleeping in my storm God how dare you be sleeping when my brother's in the hospital God how dare you be sleeping when my family is going through hell God, how dare you be sleeping when my marriage is falling apart, when my finances are going through hell, when my, when my marriage is, is going through turmoil, when I'm going through the seas. God, how dare you be asleep? You begin to question God. You begin to doubt the very thing that God promised you in the beginning. You begin to doubt in the storm. The very dry ground promise that God gave you that you and your household will serve the Lord. But the moment your daughter, your son, your mom or dad begins to say astray, say, God, where are you? How could you leave me? And you begin to let God's silence dictate his absence. But I want to let you know that our God, I want to give you a little encouragement that God is not silent in the storm because he's gone. God, silent is, God is silence in the storm is because God is not scared of a storm. My God is so good that the winds and the waves don't bother him. That, his, that, the, that the things that bother you do not bother the God. That the heavens and earth it, he holds in his hand. And that your issue doesn't bother God. Of course he cares but he's not scared of it. Switch your perspective from what you see to what God said. You will get to the other side. There's an other side for you. There's, a, there's financial blessings. There's breakthrough for you. You have to begin to believe. You have to begin to stand on it. You can't stop the storm until you're able to sleep in it. See, the story of, of Jesus on the boat and he's able to sleep in the storm. And I want to read one more story to you. It's from Acts 12. It says, it was about that time King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that it met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to kill Peter also. So Peter's about to die. He just saw James die. And skipping a couple verses, it says, So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter I want to listen to this. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentry stood guard at the entrance. I want you to, to take note of this. This is the same Peter that in the storm yelled at Jesus for being asleep. Yet, Peter is about to die. And he's asleep. How could a very man that in the midst of the storm, in the midst of a tribulation, begin to doubt God, but when he's about to die, when he just saw his friend die, when he's, he knows he's next, be sleeping the night before. And they're going to begin to, it's, it's very easy to begin to doubt God. It's honestly, it's very easy because the moment something begins to come up in your life, it's very easy to, to doubt God. It's very easy to be restless. It's very easy to be anxious. It's very easy to, be, to begin to doubt God. But the very person that on the boat said, Jesus, why are you asleep? Is about to die and is sleeping. See, Peter all throughout the Bible, he was around Jesus. But being around Jesus, his faith constantly failed. His faith constantly was watering. His, he said a lot, but he couldn't do a lot. But when Jesus, when Peter was in jail, he didn't have Jesus around him. He had Holy Spirit in him. 
So I want to let you know to be into go through your storms, to be able to sleep in your storm, to be able to be at peace at your storm. You can't just have Jesus around you. You can't just go to church for a check mark. You can't just watch a uh, post a scripture on your Instagram just so people know that you're holy, just for people to know that you're a Christian and you have a check mark on your list. You went to Sunday, you went to Wednesday. We're all good to go. No, that's not a relationship. What Jesus is saying that you have to begin to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The same man that had Jesus around him began to doubt God, but the man that had Holy Spirit within him was able to sleep in his storm. In, in Philippians 4, 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds through Jesus Christ. God is saying, don't be anxious for anything. That's a command. He's saying, don't be anxious. I know that you might be going through things. I know that you might be going through the storm, but do not be anxious for anything. Do not be anxious for your finance. Do not be anxious for things in you. And a lot of people, they can't enjoy the blessings of God today because they're worried about the troubles for tomorrow. And the thing is anxiety is things that don't even come to pass. You're worried about things that haven't even happened yet. God's saying do not be anxious about anything. And how do you do that? It's through prayer and supplication. And how Peter was able to be able to sleep in the boat in the midst. He was able to sleep in the jail cell right before he's going to be killed is having Holy Spirit with you. There's no way you could do it around. Holy Spirit is your comforter. Holy Spirit is your guide. Holy Spirit is the one that is with you. That in the midst of the storm, He's able to give you rest. He's able to give you peace at heart. You can't stop a storm you're sleeping in. Jesus. Jesus, He was able in the midst of the storm to wake up and begin to rebuke the wind. But you can't rebuke the wind. You can't rebuke the storm when the storm is inside you. You can't rebuke something. You can't re rebuke something outwardly when it's when it's inside of you. When you can't begin to speak peace when there's a storm inside of you. You be you can't be able to sleep in the storm when the storm is inside of you. When you begin to doubt God, when you begin to forget about His promises, you when you begin you begin to see the thunder and the lightning flashing, you begin to doubt God. Real test of leadership, real test of faith is in the storm. Is when you're able in the midst of the storm to be able to steer your ship and say, God is with me. God is able. Make your requests be made known to God. It doesn't say Facebook. It doesn't say to other things. It says make your requests made known to God. When you have that private relationship with the Holy Spirit, when you have that relationship with the Holy Spirit and you're able to make requests made known to God, I want to let you know that private prayer will uh, lead to public victories. You will, in the midst of the storm, will begin to have victories because of that prayer time that you had before. And you begin to, from that, you begin to speak. Speak to the storm. Great faith speaks to the storm about God. Little faith speaks to God about the storm. See, we see two people on the ship. We see the disciples. The moment the storm comes, they run to Jesus and tell Jesus about the storm. But we see Jesus. He rises up and tells the storm what to do. You can't begin to, the Bible says, it says here in, in, in Philippians, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. You can't begin to speak 
peace on your life. You can't begin to speak to the storm. You can't begin to say, tell the storm what to do. When the storm is inside you, when you have turmoil in you, you when you have uncertainty in you, when you have disbelief, when you have doubt in you, you can't begin to speak the promises of God because it's not in you. It's where you speak from that stops the storm. When you have disbelief, when you say, God, I honestly don't know if you're going to come through. I don't know if the promise that you gave me on dry ground is going to really get me to there. You can't begin to speak to it because you don't believe will God actually come through. But when you begin to come from a place that says, my God is able to do, you begin to speak to the storm. You begin to speak to the very thing that is beginning to frighten you. You begin to speak to the very thing that is beginning to storm your life. You begin to speak from a place a promise you begin to speak from a place that God said there's another side you begin to it's where you speak from you have to begin to speak from your prayer life you have to begin to speak from the time that you fasted you have to begin to speak from the from the Bible reading from the promises from what God has done and you say when when the, all you see is storm thunder and tribulation you close your eyes and you begin to grab from what God's done say God if you did it before you could do it again God if you got me to this place you can get me through this place and the peace of God that which surpasses all understanding you speak from that that's why Jesus was able to sleep in the storm. That's why Peter was able to sleep in the jail cells because he had that peace within him. All hell can break loose, but if you have the peace of God in you, Satan can't do anything. You can speak to it only when you speak from it. The good thing is in 1 John 4 4 says you children of God you little children of God that have overcome them greater is he that lives in me than he is in the world when the one that is greater than you the one that is greater than the storm the one that is doesn't get bothered by the storm the one that doesn't get scared by the thunder and lightning when he lives in you it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that lives in you and then when you have that spirit when you have that in you and you say the one that is with me is greater than the one that is against me you can begin to rebuke the wind you can begin to rebuke the storm you can begin to tell your storm to be quiet and shut up but I can't get in you a storm a ship doesn't sink with the water around it a ship doesn't sink with all the with all the the troubles around with all no matter how big the ocean is no matter how big the sea is the ship doesn't sink unless the water gets in I want to let you know don't let your issues don't let your your mistakes don't let your circum your circumstances your uh, your um situations begin to dictate how you believe god begin to uh begin to make your faith watery it's easy to have faith when everything is good it's easy to have faith when the sun is shining when the the seas are calm but real faith comes in the storm but I want to let you know where it says in Philippians, it says the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Surpasses all understanding. When you are in that turmoil, when you are in that storm, from that relationship with Christ, from knowing God's promise, from standing on his word, God is going to begin to give you a peace like no other. A scary peace. He's going to begin to give you a peace that's radical. He's going to begin to give you a faith that's radical. And I'm going to let you know that this peace scares the devil. This peace scares demons because you're gonna, the demon the devil's going to say, how can she praise God in the midst of the storm? How can she begin to believe for greatness? How can she begin to believe that God is going to take her through in the midst of the storm? But when you have the peace of God with you, you can begin to speak to the storm. You can begin to say, if God is for me, then who can be against me? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. 
You speak from it. What is faith if everything is good? That's fair weather faith. That's weak, watery faith when your family's doing good and, and your bills are paid and health is go, going good and, 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 and things are going spick and span for your life. Great, but that's not faith. I want to let you know faith is when the thunder is flashing, the thunder is roaring, the lightning is flashing, the ship is shaking. You tell God, I'm going to still praise you. I'm going to still worship you. I'm still going to give you the praise. God, I live and God, I die, but I will worship you. I will begin to stick and I will begin to steer my ship towards your promise. I don't know what storm you're going through. I don't know what you're going through in your life, what you're sailing through right now, but I want to let you know that God is with you. If God is on your boat, you're good. If God is sailing with you, you're good. God, you will get through there. You will go to the other side. I want to let you know that God's promise never comes back void stick on his promise because when you don't stick on his promise when you don't when you don't grab what God has done for you you begin to question God you begin to say God where are you why aren't you here but in fact he's been there with you the whole time I want to encourage you that this time this pandemic that we're going through there's another side for you there's another sign and God will come through. God will come through for your family, for your finances. And the thing is the peace of God when you begin to spend time with the Holy Spirit. The very thing that, that Peter began to yell at Jesus for is the very thing that Peter did in jail. He had the peace. He had the certainty in uncertain times that God will come through. And I want to encourage you guys. God will come through in your life don't abandon the boat don't abandon the ship in rough times don't abandon your life a family God's promises for your life in rough times be, but begin to stand on it even more that's where faith is built and as worship team comes up I want to encourage you guys that Life is like going through a sea. You're going to have to steer through a lot of things. You're going to have to see through thunder, through lightning, through raging seas. But God doesn't want you just to abandon it. God wants you to begin to take that boat, your family, your finances. He wants to take that ship, your life, your career, and begin to go forward. To begin to believe for more. Believe that God did it before. He could do it again. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take some time to worship right now. So take that time. Just begin to spin in God and believe that God will come through for your life. In Jesus' name.